Hello everybody, it's my face again. It's Kia, Kia Sangria. Thank you so much for joining me back on my channel today. Today for you guys, I have a tutorial on how to sew a corset. Specifically how to sew Simplicity 1345, which is this pattern right here. And I am going to be sewing View D, but in my own unique special way. Um, I'm really excited to be making this video because I previously made a corset video using another simplicity pattern and when I recorded it I was very new to kind of sewing my own corsets and stuff like that for cosplay and so I really wanted to be a little bit more intentional about making another video about this topic just because this was such a confusing topic for me when I first started sewing and I also wish that there were more tutorials for some commercial patterns that are on the market. So I am going to be using a commercial pattern to make this corset today. And the reason why I want to do this is because it's January, it's a new year, I'm just starting to plan out all of my costumes for 2022. And I know for me, I have a lot of corsets that are going to be involved in some of the costumes that I'm making for this year. So I wanted to kind of give myself a refresher by using some scrap fabric from my stash. For this corset that I'm making today, I am using poly silk for the lining, some lace, and some regular um, cotton broadcloth to create this corset. Now this corset is for cosplay so I am kind of ignoring a lot of the rules when it comes to the type of materials that you can use for cosplay. I think since I'm a, not for cosplay but for corset making, since I'm a cosplayer I have a lot more leeway to use whatever it is that I want for my corset just because I am not going after the traditional corsetry look. I'm not um, you know, I'm not looking to make a traditional corset. This is for cosplay. So I am basically just using whatever I want. I encourage you to do the same thing too. That is no disrespect to the art of corset making. I actually asked my mother-in-law for Christmas for this book, which is called um, Making Corsets by Julie Collins Breely. And I bought, well, I didn't buy it, but I asked her to buy this for me because eventually I would like to start attempting to make my own traditional corsets and getting a little bit more into the art so I felt like the best way for me to do that was to get a book so I can read and I can study and prior to starting this project I actually did look at some of the tips inside of this book when it comes to corset sewing um, adjusting patterns this book which I appreciated actually mentioned um, a few commercial patterns that one could use for corsetry which I was really happy to see because when it comes to commercial patterns and like the costuming and the traditional sewing community um, there seems to be a divide on how people feel about like the big four patterns so I was really excited to see that like an actual corset maker was even giving like the time of day to a commercial pattern in their book but I will leave a link to this book down below. I think it's really good if you too are also interested in making corsets. But yes, I will be using the Simplicity 1345 commercial pattern to make today's corset. And I will be showing you how to do this in my video. Um, I have, I think I used a pattern similar to this one by Simplicity at least twice. And they worked pretty well. Um, this is my very first time working with this specific pattern, but I'm really excited about it because there has a ton of options here that you can pick from when it comes to the type of corset you make. Um, there's some that has traditional lacing in the back, like View D, and then there's um, four other patterns that involve like a corset busk. I have not yet made a corset using a busk but it is something that I would like to try when I have a little bit more time to kind of like experiment and test the waters over there but yes this tutorial is going to be very affordable I'm going to be showing you some alternatives 
to some traditional corset making tools that I think are easily accessible, easily affordable too, if you would like to, you know, try your hand at making this project. But I am really excited to be showing this to you guys. This video is going to be in parts just so the video isn't too long and I also don't want to overwhelm you. So before we get started, please make sure to subscribe and like this video and save it for later. If you plan to like try out this pattern yourself, save this video for later so that you can come back to it and we can work on our corset together. But without further ado, thank you guys so, so much for being here. Let's get started. Okay, so at this point I have cut out all the pieces for the corset, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start attaching the lace overlay to the front. So these two are going to be my fashion fabrics and I'm just going to pin them together so that I can run them through the machine. So ultimately I had the intention of machine basting these pieces together, but I've decided that it's in my best interest to do it by hand instead, just because the lace that's on top of the fashion fabric is very delicate and it has these really small wefts that I'm afraid if I ran this through the machine and then attempted to take those same stitches out later, I'm afraid that I may accidentally tear into the lace so we're just gonna do the basting by hand. It takes more time to do it this way but it's worth it to preserve the integrity of the design that we're after so we're gonna go ahead and just baste every single corset piece um, to the lace and then after that we'll start using the machine to sew.
Okay, so at this point, I have basted all of the outer corset pieces. And once again, I did this by hand, so here's what it looks like. So now we can actually get started on sewing this piece. So I'm just gonna get the instructions out and then I'll take a look at what we need to do now. So technically we're on step three. So it says prepare each half of corset as follows with the right sides together. Pin center front to middle front. Okay. So, I guess now we can look at the pieces. This is the back. I'm just going to reorganize my table. That way, everything will be in the order that it needs to be in order for us to start sewing. Okay, so these are the pieces that we're going to attach together first. This is the center front, which in this case is piece 10 for the corset that I'm making. And I am technically making view D of this pattern. And then I will take the middle front piece, which is piece two. And it's these two sections here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin these right sides together. And then I'm gonna save the lining piece for later because we'll do the lining as its own separate piece. Before I stitch these pieces up, I am just going to take a look at any markings that I need to transfer and then I'm just gonna transfer it to this piece here using some Taylor's chalk. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin these together, right sides, and then we will get started on sewing the entire corset together. Okay, so this is the center and then side center pieces all sewn together. And this is what it looks like. So once I have 
attached all of the pieces together, we will then go in and just remove these basting stitches. But these were created just to hold everything in place. So you can see the importance of doing this if you decide to do an overlay onto your fashion fabric the way that I did. Okay, so the next step is to pin the middle front to the side front. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that step now. This is the middle front. Okay, so this is the side front piece. This is piece number three. So we're basically just going to do the same thing that we did with the two front pieces, but now working with the side pieces. And the lining, I will put to the side. Let's see what we do with that. Okay, so now we have completed the step of sewing the sides together. So here's how it's coming out. As you can see, as you start to sew the panels together, the corset itself starts to take shape. That's the really cool thing about making one of these. It's not that difficult once you actually start sewing because you're really just using straight stitches. It's just making sure that the pieces are lining up the way that they're supposed to. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with finishing this and then I will be right back for us to go over the next step.
Okay, so now that we have finished attaching all of the pieces together, we can now attach the front and back at the side seams. And then we will be able to remove all of the basting stitches inside of this piece. Okay, so here is the fashion layer. As you can see, we have now sewn all of the pieces together, so it has finally taken the shape of what a corset is supposed to look like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of the basting stitches, and then I am going to press out the seams on the back side. but there will be no like audio during this part just like music in the background so okay. Done okay? Okay, so now I have removed almost all of the basting stitches from the corset and with the exception of the sides here. I'm going to keep these here until I get a little bit further in this, but this is what it looks like with all of the basting stitches removed up until this point. So you can see the importance of us having those there it's just to keep everything in place so that it's just easier to sew. Uh, both layers together. So what I'm going to do now to finish off the main piece of this corset is I'm actually just going to go ahead and iron and clip my seams. And I use two different tools for doing this when it comes to corsets. I use a tailor's ham, which is a device used to sew, sorry, not to sew, but to flatten curved seams. So the bust of the corset, I'm going to be using the tailor's ham to kind of iron this piece down just so that I can keep it rounded. And then for all the other 
seams, I am going to use a clapper. And basically what this does is after you have finished ironing a section, you just put this on top and that just flattens it further so that it's just easier to work with later on. So I'm going to show you both of these tools in action so you can understand their purpose. This does not mean that you need to run out and grab one, but because I do a lot of sewing, I find these to be really helpful in all of the projects that I use them for. Okay, so I have finished pressing my seam. So here's what the inside part of the corset looks like. Everything is all nice and flat and it looks good. And then this is the outside. So everything looks like really cute, very smooth here. No bumps, no lumps. No complaints. So this is where I am going to end part one of this video. Thank you so much for joining me here to see part one of this. We will pick up where we left off in part two. So if you are not subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed so that you know when the next video for part two on how to make this corset is live. But I'm Kia Sangria. Please be sure to follow me in my social links down below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.